me in. Um, so first up, we have uh, Takalani Nimangani, who is the Director of Multi-Wavelength Astronomy uh, at the Department of Science and Innovation. Uh, he's just going to give us a presentation on the mission on astronomy uh, up to, I'll read his title here. There we go, the vision for astronomy in South Africa. Uh, this is not my area of expertise. And then, wait, should I share the screen? Share the screen with us. Um, yeah, that's the whole screen. Okay. Sorry, I think that's working. Okay, good morning, and uh, thank you very much uh, for the invitation from uh, ASA, the Astronomical uh, Society of Southern Africa, uh, to come here on behalf of the government of South Africa, uh, specifically the Department of uh, Science and Innovation, uh, uh, to come and uh, also join you as you celebrate your centennial. And therefore, I would like to say uh, congratulations uh, to ASA uh, for reaching this uh, significant uh, milestone uh, in their journey of the passion you know, for the stars. Um, and, and, and therefore, I think it is really befitting uh, for, for me also uh, to share with you uh, what we are doing uh, to, 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 to grow this uh, field of astronomy uh, in South Africa, but also in Africa, uh, you know, more broadly. So I, I've got a, a presentation that I'm just going to uh, share with you. Um, so I think you are much more familiar also with this uh, history. Uh, you know, I, I was here at, at SEO in 2020 as we were uh, celebrating 200 years uh, of astronomy. And therefore, astronomy has really become a part of our heritage and, and, and legacy. And really, it's a beautiful story. Uh, you know, to, 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 talk, to talk about. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and of course, uh, uh, re, I mean, optical astronomy has been the front runner. And, and then, of course, uh, radio astronomy as well uh, is also growing very big uh, with the advent of us hosting uh, the square kilometer, you know, array uh, uh, telescope, uh, you know, in, 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 in Carnarvon. Uh, and and uh, this uh, coming week, uh, I'm heading to Namibia, uh, where we're going to celebrate 20 years of the S telescope, uh, the gamma ray telescope, of which South Africa uh, is also an active, uh, you know, participant in that uh, telescope. Uh, but of but of course, we also here at the, at CEO, we also hosting uh, other international and regional offices of astronomy, uh, the IAU Office of Astronomy Development, which uh, started here back in 2011, and now more recently, the African Astronomical Society that was launched in 2019. So I think that uh, really shows the, the depth and the breadth of uh, the astronomy portfolio uh, in the country. And all of this, uh, you know, we investing let's say about a, a, a 1 billion rand a year uh, to make all of this happen. So it is by any standards, uh, quite a significant discipline that we regard as one of our flagship uh, projects uh, in South Africa because of the geographic advantage uh, that we have of beautiful sites, astronomical sites, and, uh, but also being in the Southern you know, Hemisphere. So, uh, and all this is driven by what we call the multi-wavelength astronomy strategy, which was more of a community-driven strategy 
uh, that was approved back in uh, 2015 uh, by cabinet, and uh, uh, particularly the Minister of Science and Technology, as you know, our uh, a vision, you know, to position South Africa uh, to become one of the uh, leading nations in the field of uh, you know astronomy by building our own telescopes, but but also hosting other telescopes, but also by building partnerships, you know, with uh, the rest of the world. And uh, so these are the, oh, sorry. Um, and, and, and these are the uh, pillars of the strategy uh, to make sure that we can make this, you know, a reality. But of course, also from government, we've even taken this to another level where we, we actually uh, passed a, 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 a government parliament legislation, which we call the Geographic uh, Astronomy Act of 2007, which we use to protect the Northern Cape as an astronomy reserve. And therefore, uh, the service providers who are, whether it is the mines or the renewable energy projects, whoever is operating in the area has to get a permit from us, make sure that they are not interfering with the telescopes in Sutherland and also the telescopes in, uh, uh, in, in, in Carnarvon. And of course, my job mainly is to make sure that we have all the policies and the strategies, the funding support and all the stakeholder management in place to make sure that uh, you know, we support uh, all of this. Uh, well, that just uh, shows you the timeline of, of this history of astronomy that uh, we have in the, in the country. I'm not going to necessarily go through it, uh, but it just shows some of the uh, milestones uh, over, you know, over the years. Um, um, of course, uh, from a government perspective, we're investing a lot of money. We expect to get something uh, out of it. And uh, so how is that uh, being envisaged? Of course, it's a geographic advantage, as I said. So we have to obviously maximize scientific outputs out of the, the research in this area. And so we monitor that. And I think this is uh, growing very well. Well, uh, I've just commissioned uh, another scientometric uh, review uh, so that we can know where we are exactly in terms of the global ranking uh, in astronomy. So hopefully, uh, if we can get South Africa to the top 10 in terms of our scientific uh, uh, outputs, I think that would be great. Uh, of course, we increasing the size of astronomy community, uh, you know, through uh, you know, various programs, the bursary programs that we have in place. As you can see, we're investing, uh, sorry, uh, we're investing quite uh, significantly on the bursary programs. The SKA bursary program alone is 60 million rand a year. The NAS program, uh, you know, is about 20. So all in all, about 80 million a year that we're using to grow this astronomy community in terms of the pipeline, the skills development, and also through other funding instruments, uh, there's about six astronomy research chairs at various universities uh, to make sure that we can build our scientific uh, capability in this area. Uh, but also more and more, we are also looking at the technological uh, returns, um, you know, in terms of our innovations. Uh, you know, that arise out of astronomy uh, can also benefit society uh, as well as uh, industry. As you know, um, technologies like Wi-Fi that we use today, today are actually inventions that came out of the field of uh, astronomy. Uh, of course, we try to also use uh, 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 big data and also adaptation you know, into FOIR in terms of, uh, you know, the, the data skills that exist in astronomy and using that as a catalyst and, uh, you know, for that, but also socioeconomic returns uh, because these telescopes are 
even though they are built in, in, in rural uh, parts of the country where there are small towns, uh, they still have to impact positively educational outcomes in those uh, towns and also contributing to development. And I think a good example, of course, is uh, Sutherland, uh, where we have the salt collateral benefits uh, program, and, and the same happens in the SKA uh, area. But also, of course, outreach uh, you know, is very important uh, in terms of the various programs uh, that we have, but also Pan-African uh, uh, development, um, you know, to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, South Africa is growing together with the rest of Africa. So we have various programs to make sure that, uh, you know, we can uh, develop astronomy uh, across Africa. So that just gives you a sense of, uh, you know, there is a, a, a telescope in Ghana and all the satellite communication dish that we converted to a radio telescope. This is part of the SKA. Uh, capacity building programs because hopefully as the SKA telescope grows, some of the outer stations will be placed in some of the uh, countries in Africa. But of course, international partnerships, astronomy is an international enterprise, more and more bigger telescopes that require core investments from different countries uh, to make them happen. And uh, so we uh, uh, therefore you know, I mean, the SOL Sol telescope is a good example uh, with uh, several countries coming together to build the, the, the SOL telescope. Same with SKA uh, as well, but also we're hosting quite a number of other international uh, you know, projects uh, in South Africa um, and also collaborating even with the, like, with the BRICS countries uh, in astronomy. Uh, I'm not going to go into the detail, but I think this just shows you that uh, this, all these things are not happening by accident, but they've been thoroughly thought through in terms of our policy development uh, of, the, of the new government going back to 1996, uh, where we, that is where the vision started to um, actually build astronomy, you know, as one of the flagship areas. So, and it was followed through by various strategies of government over the years. Um, so, so from a planning, uh, so this is uh, to make sure that uh, a government is investing uh, in this area. And of course, we have a new white paper uh, that also still prioritizes astronomy. Uh, and, and what are we doing currently? Um, maybe before I, go, I get to this, I think over the years, the astronomy institutional landscape here has been, you know, of, of course evolving. I mean, the South African Astronomical Observatory, where we are now, uh, if you, you remember, was actually even a major at the time of the Royal Astronomical Society, the Johannesburg Observatory and the Radcliffe observatory, I think back in 1972. Uh, so even SEO itself uh, was actually a major of those observatories that were existing, um, you know, at the time. Uh, and uh, I mean, I'm sure from 1972 to now, it's almost, what, 50 years of, uh, of this new major of SEO. So we continuously try to review the astronomical institutional landscape uh, you know, depending on the dynamics of the time to see what, what will be best, uh, you know, going forward. So this is really what uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, talking about. And then the last uh, I want to talk about is the astro tourism strategy uh, that I'm currently, uh, uh, you know, finalizing together with the Department of uh, Tourism. Uh, to see how we can uh, build astrotourism around some of these uh, investments that we are making. But also because South Africa still has uh, many uh, places in, 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 uh, in, across the provinces, you know, many uh, places where people can still do stargazing. Uh, so how do we capitalize on that 
to create uh, astrotourism, uh, you know, in South Africa, because that will also help us to actually create more awareness in the public about actually protecting our dark skies and radio silence, because that is what makes us unique. Um, <clears throat> you know, so where, so, and I think that is one area where I think together with ASA, if we can join hands, uh, we can make sure that it becomes very big and, and, and makes an impact, uh, you know, in, 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 in the country. Um, and I think you will just see that uh, I just listed some of the examples. I mean, the Kruger National Park as well actually made a call that they, to small businesses to see if whilst people are watching the animals in the evening, they can do stargazing within the Kruger uh, National Park. Um, but of course, we're also investing on the upgrading our visitor center here at SEO, as well as uh, hopefully early next year, the president of the country might be launching an SKA Science Visitor Center in Carnarvon. You know, uh, so, so those are some of the uh, things that we are doing. But of course, across the country, we have various planetaria, the Naval Hill, the Iziko Museum, uh, a vet's planetarium, and also in, in Sutherland. Uh, most of them, I mean, all of them are almost dig digital planetariums now. The vet's one, they've just announced that they will be spending uh, quite a lot of money to, to convert the old vets uh, into a digital planetarium. So all of those things, I think, help us. But of course, there are other sites as well, the meteorite sites and so on. Uh, that we need to also revive uh, to see how we can build uh, astrotourism you know, around uh, you know, uh, 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 some of those. I've just visited the Fredford Dome and I'm intending to visit uh, uh, this one uh, soon. Uh, so I think just to end up by saying, I'm sure you are aware that uh, South Africa will be hosting uh, the General Assembly of the International Astronomical Union in 2024. Um, uh, so this will be hosted uh, here in Cape Town, where we hope to bring about 3,000 astronomers. And uh, you know, I'm sure the colleagues from SEO and AFAS here will tell you more about that. So again, that is another opportunity. I'm sure we can work together with SEO to make sure that, uh, you know, so, but, you know, I, 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 as I was thinking about this, I mean, uh, what are the areas of uh, potential collaboration that we can have? And I've been discussing with Delia and, and, and Petri here. Uh, of course, outreach and, and public engagement. This is what uh, ASA is very good. Uh, the amateur astronomers and some of the professional astronomers that are involved, because I think this is uh, very important. If we can also tap into some of your resources and your experiences, uh, because you are very passionate about uh, astronomy. Uh, you've got uh, newsletters and books. And of course, uh, credit to uh, amateur astronomers uh, that you know, actually some of the discoveries of uh, you know, comments and stars were actually done by you know, amateur astronomers. I mean, for me, a good example is Robert Ings, uh, who discovered Proxima Centauri, which is the nearest star um, our nearest um, a star, I mean, he was a self-taught astronomer and the first president of the Johannesburg uh, um, Observatory, um, you know, so well. Uh, and of course, these are some of your publications that uh, I've gathered that you publish. And, and, and the, I mean, this one, I love it so much, you know, annual handbook on Star, uh, Sky Guide Africa, very, very nice publication. Of course, ourselves also, we have the African Science Stars, a publication that we are now pub, uh, you know, publishing almost every quarter. And then we have uh, and the two ladies at the back here who are here from that uh, publication uh, to cover it. And of course, Tapas also has a newsletter, but also we can collaborate around how, you know, the membership models. I am aware that uh, to become part of ASA, you have to pay a certain membership. And in the return, I think, uh, you know, you get uh, uh, something out of that. And uh, we're still exploring uh, the membership model uh, around uh, 
the African Astronomical Society. But as far as the South African astronomers, um, you know, as government, we pay a certain amount per year to, to the IAU so that all our astronomers, uh, you know, can join the IAU free of charge because we are already taking care, you know, of that cost uh, through the, uh, the NRF. So, uh, uh, so it's, it's how we can, you know, actually collaborate together, but also we can collaborate together by make, you know, through conferences and exhibitions. Actually, I have attended your Scopex exhibition that you, you, you used to have annually at the Rosebank Military Museum. I think I probably attended it twice um, and saw some very nice old telescopes uh, that the amateur astronomers love and, and, and so on. But actually, you may be aware that Scopex is actually also funded by us uh, through um, SASTA. I think they used to give you a bit of a grant there to host that uh, Scopex. Um, of course, we, we have astronomy town meetings and APAS conference. How can we uh, collaborate uh, together in that area? But also, uh, you know, there are other amateur societies, more and more astronomy clubs emerging throughout the continent. How does ASA assist those as well? Um, and also working together with AFAS. Uh, so I, I just thought, uh, you know, the, those are some, some of the things that we can look at. And I think that uh, sort of brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so thanks, Daniel. I don't know if there's any question. I would be happy to entertain that, or, if, or rather if you prefer to put the other presentations and be done. Thank you. <laughs> Um, uh, thank you very much, TK. I, I think that uh, we all recognize um, yeah, what an incredible resource we have in South Africa in terms of our dark skies, radio flights. Um, and I think that's trying to maximize that in, in, in all of the ways that Mr. Tuckerland has mentioned is incredibly important um, and exciting. Uh, there, there's one question on the chat, which I don't know if you can answer, um, but we'll see. Um, what are the chances of inviting the international community to build a gravitational wave detector in South Africa? Yeah, so, so um, I'm sure he's, he's, he's talking about the legal experiment, yeah. the laser um, you know, detector for gravitational waves. We've actually done a pre-feasibility study uh, near the SKA site where it actually shows that to me, because you know, for, for, for gravitational wave detector, you need a very flat um, you know, surface. You know, so, uh, so that pre-feasibility study actually showed that we do have a very flat surface that can actually be ideal for a legal a type of experiment. Uh, but, but we are, we were, of course, a bit hesitant to go into that because that is actually, again, another big project. I mean, it could be another multi-billion uh, rent. <laughs> we already very much committed uh, to the SKA project, which is costing us, uh, I mean, a lot of money, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> uh, so uh, we just felt that uh, funding-wise, uh, we probably not, we were not ready uh, I mean, then we. I mean, I've been in discussions with the Americans, you know, around this gravitational thing. At, actually, at the same time, we were lobbying for the SKA when we used to go to to Washington. You know, they would come to our event and say, uh, you know, can't you also host uh, this uh, gravitational? <laughs> you know, so so I, I know India has has gone that way, but yeah, as I say. I'm sure we would love to uh, in some time in the future. Uh, if we had the money, why not? You know, uh, if I had a double budget to what I have now, I'll, the question would be yes. You know, we'll certainly go. But maybe what we can do is, uh, in the meantime, we can start maybe uh, building, uh, you know, small steps um, around this area. Uh, you know, maybe capacity and research and so on in South Africa, 
around gravitational waves. And maybe maybe one needs to do a bit of a survey in terms of what, what is happening around gravitational waves at the moment. I know uh, one of, I mean, the experiment that was done of detecting the, 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 the gravitational waves, I think uh, some telescope and others, I think, participated actually in that, you know, as part of a sort of multi-messenger astronomy. So, so yeah, so, so I think there are ways in which we can, and maybe we just need to have a, to gather our minds together and see how we can slowly, uh, yeah, you know, so I don't know if that helps you. No, I think that's <laughs> really good question. Um, I think that's great. Um, yeah, as, as I can only said, we were involved in salt for the first spectrum of the, the 2017. Uh, neutron star merger, um, and and we're on that like essentially alertness. So if anything does happen, um, the SO telescopes and salt are ready to to respond with electromagnetic um, uh, spectrum. Uh, there's just two more, and then we'll we'll move on to Petri. Um, the, there was just a question about the pro progress of the VLBR. Uh, so in terms of SKA, maybe we can give yes, a yes, little, yes. little update on that. Yeah, on the African uh, VLBI, very long baseline interferometer. So just, uh, I already mentioned that there was a dish in Ghana. So we're working here together with the eight other African countries. So what happened at the time is that we conceptualized this idea of a, a VLBI because of the void that we have in Africa for VLBI experiments across uh, the world. Uh, so, but, we, we have sort of taken a step back at the moment to reflect on the AVN program, given the, the Ghana dish that we converted into a telescope. And, and the, some of the lessons are as follows, is that it is actually very expensive uh, to convert an old antenna into a telescope because the kind of technical issues that we came across whilst converting the Ghana dish, like for instance, the bearing, you have to replace the bearing and so on. So all, you know, we actually spent maybe close to about 80 million rent. Um, so we were now thinking whether it is worthwhile to continue with the AVN as it is. And, and, and because there are other old antennas in other African countries, but the thing is, it's gonna, it takes more time, longer, costs more money, and even after you have converted the telescopes, the operational costs will always be higher because, you know, I mean, it's like buying an old car. You will always be spending lots of money throughout the, the entire life, you know, of, of that, you know. Uh, so, but of course, from a training uh, perspective, it was very good. I mean, it's just like if someone is buying a new car, they may not know much about a car, but if they are buying a second hand, I'm sure a person gets to know more about the car because, now and then you have to fix something. So, so but what we are doing now, the change in strategy is that we are now, as part of still part of the AVN, we are now looking at rather putting new antennas. I mean, we are probably going to start with Botswana because the cost of a new antenna is becoming less and less. I think we could get a, 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 a new antenna for maybe 15, 20 million. You know, that we let's say we can put in Botswana and maybe the same in other countries. So we're kind of moving away from the original concept of all and converting all antennas because it is costly, it takes time and so on. But we're looking more and more in putting new antennas. And those and the antenna and, and the beautiful thing about the new strategy is that we will be putting SKA type antennas. So what, what that will help us to do is that we are already giving, incentivizing the SKA project so that they can move into phase two later. And they will find us already maybe with some kind of SKA type antennas in those countries, which will make it easier for SKA VLBI, but also probably maybe connecting those telescopes to other VLBI experiments. So I think the progress is there. What we, 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 we continue to do, we're still investing a lot in those countries in terms of capacity building programs uh, in Africa. So we're still giving bursaries to our partner countries and rolling out high performance 
uh, computing capabilities in their universities and, and so on. So they, I think we're still making good progress, but we just uh, kind of changing the strategy a little bit. Thanks. Thank you, Tika. I think we've been having you talking all day. Uh, got uh, fascinating updates on everything. Um, but we will need to move on. Uh, there's one other question on light pollution, but I think we can discuss that maybe this afternoon in the discussion. Um, it is obviously a very important thing too, um, from from various points of view. 